Hey YouTube, it's been a while. I would like to share a new, easier method for modding the PS2 versions of Persona 3 and 4 as well as SMT Nocturne. This modification is made by TGE, who's well known for making several other Persona modding tools. This method works on PCSX2 and should theoretically work on any device or emulator that runs PS2 games, as long as you can boot from an elf and use host FS. I have not tested this with any other hardware or software yet. So just to be clear, if you're using an emulator that can only boot from an ISO, you'll still have to use the old method. For some quick background here, I'll start by showing the old method I just mentioned. If you head to my website, you can download TGE's Mod Compendium, a Windows program that lets you sort mods for different Persona games and apply multiple of them at once. Most mods on the site come in the form of zip files, which you can extract to your Mod Compendium's mod folder. Then it's a simple matter of refreshing, clicking the checkbox on the mods that you want, and hitting build. Normally this will extract the CVM archives from your ISO that contain the game's files, update the contents, and then output them to a folder. The ELF is also updated with the new offsets for your changed files to prevent crashing. However, here's the inconvenient part. Not only does it take a while to extract and rebuild these CVMs every time, which can make testing mods really tedious. But up until now, to repack your ISO we would need a copy of Ultra ISO installed with a premium license. The free trial version doesn't allow you to save a full-sized ISO, which is what we need, but it's the only program we've found that consistently makes bootable images. Results with other ISO programs have been at best hit or miss, and there has been reports of Power ISO, which is free working on real PS2s, but not PCSX2. So anyway, once you've acquired a paid version, you could just open your ISO, drag the new contents into it, replacing the original, and then save it and then run your mod that way. Which again can take a while, especially depending on your processor speed and whether your files are stored on a hard drive or an SSD. You can even drop a shortcut to Ultra ISO in your Mod Compendium's Dependencies folder to automatically output an ISO whenever you hit Build, which basically does the same thing as manually dragging your new archives and stuff like I just showed. But with all that said, it's time to showcase the new method and how to set it up. This method does not require you to modify your ISO at all, instead we'll be using a code patch that makes the game load files over the local network, aka your computer's file system, rather than the archives in the ISO. This method is 100% free, and the results are pretty much instant every time you change a file, even while the game is running, so it has several advantages over the old method. To begin, you'll just need PCSX2, a North American unmodified ISO of Persona 3 FES, Persona 4, or Nocturne, and the mod compendium. You'll also want to navigate to my site and download the code patch for whichever game you pick. In this example, we'll be doing Persona 4. So when you download the code file, be sure to remove the .txt extension and choose all files as the type. Place it in your emulator's cheats folder. If one already exists, you can add underscore loader to the file name to differentiate them, and it should load both. That's actually another great thing about this method. Normally when you modify the ISO, the game's CRC changes, which is the hex code in the name of the patch file. You can think of it as a hash for the executable. Since we're not modifying our ISO, it's always going to have the same CRC, so you can mod to your heart's content without having to constantly rename your cheat files. Anyway, the next step is to enable cheats in PCSX2. You also want to go into the emulator's INI folder and edit PCSX2 underscore VM. Set hostfs to enabled and save.
Next, make a folder for the game. This could be anywhere on your PC. And open your ISO with whatever you want. 7-zip, for instance, works fine. You will want to extract the executable, the file that starts with SLUS, to your folder. Also, go ahead and add the ELF extension to it. Finally, set this folder as your output folder in the mod compendium, and check the host FS box in the settings. Now when you build your mods, it'll immediately output the files directly to this folder. No more waiting around for it to extract your ISO and repack stuff. All that's left to do is select your unmodified ISO in PCSX2, but instead of booting it the typical way, we're going to select Run Elf and choose our extracted Elf file. If the cheats were applied, you should hopefully notice the modifications have loaded. From now on, changing anything is as easy as hitting Build again in the Mod Compendium. One last thing. While the method is exactly the same for Persona 3 FES, aside of course from needing a separate patch, the Nocturne patch also requires you to extract the contents of a file from the ISO called DDS3.img. You'll need another program made by TGE to do that called DDS3Pack. The link to download it can be found in the description. Just move the exe and dll to the location of your .img file and open a command prompt at the location. Just type dds3pack on pack dds3.img and press enter. You'll want to move the output files to a folder called dds3data, including the contents of the extracted movie folder from the ISO. At this point, just like before, it's just a matter of loading the cheats and running the elf, and this will save you from having to repack the img file in the ISO every time you want to test something. Thank you so much for watching, I hope this helped in some way. I can see myself using this method in most cases from now on since it's extremely convenient. And as always, check out my website for the latest mods and tools, as well as info on modding any of these games. I'd also love to see any of your own creations shared on the forum. In the future, I intend to make more videos in this series going more in-depth on how to do things like edit models, textures, dialogue, sounds, scripts, you name it. But for now, you can check the wiki for info on any formats that you come across.